Hi there, Smith Clovers. It's Mrs. Markevich, and welcome to a Smith Clove Short. Now that we've started our school year and we've gotten into the swing of things, we're going to start delivering a few videos throughout the year to help your child become more successful as they go on through Smith Clove and throughout their school years. So the first thing that we want to talk to you about is the word courage. Now, courage doesn't mean to be fearless. Courage can be many different things, and we'll talk to you a little bit about what courage can look like for students in kindergarten and first grade, what it could look like for them at home, but also what it can look like for them at school, and how we can help to raise courageous and brave students who aren't afraid to take risks, who aren't afraid to make mistakes, and who aren't afraid to grow. Courage might look like a student who is trying to master a new skill that's really difficult, like a student who is trying to do the right thing in a difficult situation, owning up to a mistake that they've made, saying I'm sorry and committing to do better. Come with me, we'll talk a little more. You might be thinking, where do I be even begin? How do I create a courageous child who's not afraid to take risks? Well, one of the ways is to give them opportunities to build their self-esteem. And the best way to do that is to give them opportunities to complete tasks independently. So for example, putting shoes on by themselves or cleaning up their own toys, setting the table. Sometimes things will require the help from an adult. But they should always attempt to do it on their own. And if they need help, teach them how to ask for help because that can be difficult sometimes as well. Those types of tasks are really important, but it becomes our responsibility to make sure that we help and we coach, not do for them. As they grow and they begin to do things more independently, they'll start to feel success and achievement and proud. Another really fun way to teach children to be courageous, resilient, and to take risks is to play games. And as hard as it may be, don't let them win all the time. Here's why. It's way too hard for me to be able to solve this Rubik's Cube. I'll never be able to do it. I quit. Or, when I first tried, I didn't know where to begin. But I kept trying and I found out a strategy and now I have almost two rows. I'm going to keep trying and see if I could figure out how to complete those two rows. And maybe, Maybe I'll come up with a way to be able to complete all of it for one side. And maybe it'll get easier, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. I mean, after all, the fun of playing a game is in the actual playing of the game and not in the outcome. And that's really the lesson that we want them to learn in life. It's resilience. Oh, there's just so much to think about. One final thing, and that really has to do with our feelings and our emotions. It's really important from a young age that we teach children to really identify the way that they're feeling, to be able to name those feelings and understand what those feelings mean, because they matter. I may want to play with a toy that another friend has. I may not want to wait for my turn. I may want to have recess a little bit longer. I may not want to go to bed when it's time. And nothing, and I mean nothing, inflicts the kind of emotion from hearing the word no. Feelings and emotions matter, and it's important that we teach children to identify and say things like, I'm feeling frustrated, or I'm angry right now. It's also important that we teach children how to manage those feelings. Identifying those feelings are the first step in being able to move forward from them. When we teach children how to identify and name those, we validate those feelings, and we accept the fact that they exist. Once we do that, we can always teach them how we move forward, and that's the important step. We tell them it's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to be upset. And then we talk about the next steps to move forward because that's what we need to do. We need to move forward. And that's really the first step in resilience. So when students at school or your children at home are having these feelings, it's worth the time to really discuss them and talk about the next steps as opposed to giving in or pretending that they don't exist. So practice with your child at home when they feel upset or even when they're excited and really identifying how they're feeling and then talking about the steps that they can move forward with in order to feel better or to feel differently. It's really important and it helps them to problem solve and resolve conflict later in life. I hope these were helpful to you and I hope they're helpful with your student. We're here to support you and to work together to help create this community of learners here and outside of school. So stay cool Smith Clovers and we'll see you soon.